Do you remember Ryback? From 2012 to 2013, it felt like he was one of the hottest wrestlers in WWE. He had a cool look and that awesome Feed Me More chant, and arguably could have been WWE Champion. Well, I've gotten a lot of requests to cover him, so let's revisit Ryback's first and last matches. I feel like ever since I debuted in the WWE as Ryback, there's been a little bit of a misunderstanding between you and myself. There's a lot you don't know about me, why I stand here, where I do today. Ryback, or his birth name, Ryan Reeves, grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. At 12 years old, the future human wrecking ball attended a WWE event where he got to serve as the guest bell ringer. It was at that event where I decided I wanted to be a WWE superstar. Ryback didn't waste any time pursuing his dream and began weightlifting before he was even a teenager. Throughout high school and college, the big guy excelled in sports and eventually attended the University of Nevada, Las Vegas and majored in their fitness management program. Ryback's goal was still to be a wrestler, so he decided to enter the $1 million Tough Enough contest in 2004. He got to participate in a tryout and was selected as one of the eight finalists. Despite sustaining injuries along the way, Ryback pushed through, but would unfortunately be the fourth man eliminated. After failing to win a WWE contract, Ryback found himself in a rough spot. I'd lost my dream job, the only thing I ever wanted to do with my life. And I fell into a deep depression. Then one day I came across this book called The Secret, a book on positivity. Taught me about the law of attraction and just how truly powerful the human mind really is. Ryback found the strength to give wrestling another try and was offered a development contract with WWE. The big guy spent the next several years training and competing in WWE's development system. We would finally see Ryback return to WWE in February 2010, when he was announced as one of eight rookies who would be competing on the first season of NXT. Despite using the name Ryback while in development, the Human Wrecking Ball instead used the name Skip Sheffield. Like Tough Enough, Ryback was unsuccessful and was the third man eliminated from the competition. However, it wouldn't be long before Ryback was seen again. And then shortly thereafter, you guys may remember, I made my debut with a little group called The Nexus. In June 2010, he along with the other NXT rookies would form a group called The Nexus and wreaked havoc on WWE. Unfortunately, Ryback's time with the faction would get cut short when he was injured during an untelevised event. He spent over a year recovering, and once he was ready to return, The Nexus was long gone. I have this scar going all the way down from my knee to my foot to remind me every day just how lucky I am to be in a WWE ring today. After two bad surgeries and three doctors telling me that I would never wrestle again, Ryback was born and I returned back to the WWE. With nowhere to go, this gave the NXT rookie a chance to bring back his former identity, Ryback. He spent the first few months of 2012 competing at non-televised WWE events until finally making his debut on the April 6, 2012 episode of SmackDown. From inside the arena that would eventually host the Thunderdome, the Amway Center, Ryback's first opponent, a man named Barry Stevens, grabbed the mic. I, w I heard this was the happiest place on earth, but it looks like you people are the rudest people on earth. The big guy came out to cut off the local competitor, and while Ryback's iconic entrance looked similar, it lacked a lot of the fanfare. This place on Earth follows Barry Stevens, and he's honored to be here competing. Anyways, the match began with Ryback shoving Stevens into the corner and assaulting the jobber with his shoulder and fist. To display his strength, the human wrecking ball lifted Barry Stevens straight over his bald head and slammed the poor man down with his shoulder. Ryback finally put Barry out of his misery by picking him up once more and delivering the shell shock and getting the three count. It's a normal squash match, so there isn't much to it. However, I wish Ryback performed just one more big move. I did like that they allowed Barry Stevens to talk before the match, just because it made him a bit more interesting. The weirdest part though was Ryback's entrance. As I mentioned earlier, there was no bang, but his music didn't have any lyrics either, which made the whole thing feel a bit off. That of course would change as Ryback continued to wrestle, so let's see what happened after his first match. Ryback would continue to easily destroy his opponents and built up an impressive 38 match winning streak. This naturally earned him a WWE Championship match, which he received at the 2012 Hell in a Cell. It seemed like the big guy was about to win the title, but a low blow and fast count from the referee, Brad Maddox, not only cost Ryback his chance at the gold, but also ended his streak. Ryback did get his revenge on Maddox, but remained focused on the WWE Champion, CM Punk. 
He would compete in two more title matches, but failed both times, due to interference from the Shield. Naturally, Ryback then feuded with the trio, but even though he had Sheamus and John Cena on his team, Ryback was defeated by the Shield at Elimination Chamber 2013. Things only got worse when the Human Wrecking Ball faced Mark Henry at WrestleMania 29 and also came up short. The big guy wasn't out of the spotlight yet when he turned heel by attacking John Cena on the post-WrestleMania edition of Raw. Ryback later explained that he was getting revenge on the leader of the C-Nation for not having his back when they were fighting the Shield. Ryback faced John Cena twice for the WWE Championship, but like before, the big guy came up short both times. Ryback did rebound by getting a win over Chris Jericho at Money in the Bank, and later aligned himself with Paul Heyman. This ironically led to Ryback feuding with CM Punk again, but this time with Ryback as the heel and Punk as the face. What makes the whole thing even funnier is that they also squared off at the 2013 Hell in a Cell, just like they did in 2012. Also like last time, Ryback failed to defeat the Straight Edge Wrestler. After that, Ryback began a tag team with Curtis Axel due to them both being Paul Heyman guys. They called themselves Rybaxel, and I'll just let this comment from Josh Nielsen do the talking. Like many tag teams, Rybaxel did pick up some solid wins, but never captured the tag team titles. In August of 2014, Ryback underwent surgery, which put him out of action for a couple of months. When he returned, he officially ended his team with Curtis Axel and began flying solo again. This also meant that Ryback was face again, and he also brought back the Feed Me More gimmick. He then went on to feud with the Authority by being on John Cena's team at Survivor Series and defeating Kane at TLC. He also teamed up with Dolph Ziggler and Eric Rowan at Fastlane 2015, but they lost to Kane, Big Show, and Seth Rollins. Things really started to pick up for Ryback when he finally won his first WWE title at Elimination Chamber, the Intercontinental Championship. The Human Wrecking Ball defended the title against the legs of The Big Show and The Miz and was able to successfully retain. The Big Guy then began a rivalry with Kevin Owens after KO cost Ryback a match against Seth Rollins. The two squared off with Ryback's Intercontinental title on the line and Owens managed to defeat Ryback, ending Mr. Feed Me More's championship reign at 112 days. Ryback was unsuccessful in both of his rematches and would never challenge for the IC title again. In February 2016, Ryback debuted a new look, getting rid of his singlet and replacing it with simple black trunks. Only a few weeks after the wardrobe change, Ryback would turn heel again, walking out on his tag team partners, Kane and Big Show, during a match. He later explained his actions by saying he was tired of working as a team. Following his heel turn, Ryback began feuding with the United States Champion, Kalisto. Despite his size, Ryback was unable to beat the former Lucha Dragon when they faced off at WrestleMania 32. The two met again in a non-title rematch on SmackDown, where Ryback avenged his loss by defeating the masked wrestler. This win earned the big guy another title shot, which would also turn out to be Ryback's last match in WWE. The final time we saw Ryback wrestle was at the 2016 Payback Kickoff Show. The first one out was the US Champion, Kalisto who is actually the same height as Ryback's first WWE opponent. Ryback made his entrance and took some inspiration from CM Punk. The big guy got the match started by immediately knocking Kalisto to the ground and then wearing him out with a headlock. Ryback was a bit too cocky though, which allowed the luchador to make a comeback. The human wrecking ball retreated to the outside, but Kalisto fired back with a suicide dive. The US champ followed up with a corkscrew that nearly ended in disaster, but thanks to Ryback's quick reflexes, Kalisto wasn't hurt. When both men were back in the ring, Kalisto attempted a wheelbarrow bulldog, but Ryback decided to throw him into the turnbuckles instead. Kalisto tried him out a quick comeback, but Ryback's strength was too much. Now with a firm control of the match, the big guy kept Kalisto on the ground and continued wearing him down. The laid-back attitude of Ryback ended up costing him as Kalisto jumped off the middle rope and planted the Human Wrecking Ball with a Tornado DDT. Since it worked well once, Kalisto decided to hit Ryback with a second DDT, this time on the edge of the ring. After that, the camp flight was on a roll and began throwing everything he had at Ryback. Despite all the hits, Ryback was somehow able to kick out and keep the match going. The big guy finally shut down the luchador by catching Kalisto with a spine buster. Deciding to fight fire with fire, Ryback got on the top rope. Kalisto tried to fight back, but Ryback still managed to hit the masked wrestler with a massive military press slam. 
The challenger tried to follow up with a frog splash, but at the last moment, Kalisto rolled out of the way, allowing the US champ to hit the Salida del Sol and retain his title. For what it was, I thought this match was alright. I loved how smooth all the counters were, and while it's scary, it's cool to see Ryback save Kalisto from a serious injury. The match wasn't spectacular, but I think Ryback could have ended his WWE career on a much lower note. It's kind of interesting too, despite being the big guy, both Ryback's first and last opponents were smaller guys. The next day, it was reported that WWE sent Ryback home due to contract disputes. Shortly after the news, Ryback explained that his departure was primarily fueled by a lack of equal pay and creative frustrations. After a few months of silence, it was officially announced that Ryback had been released from his WWE contract. Shortly after leaving, Ryback actually changed his first name from Ryan to Ryback so that he could legally use his WWE name. Since WWE, Ryback has wrestled independently but hasn't competed since 2018. In addition to wrestling, Ryback hosts his own podcast, YouTube channel, and also launched his own nutrition supplement called Feed Me More. Feed me more! While it's unlikely, would you like to see Ryback return to WWE? Let me know in the comments. Also, watch the video in the center to see Adam Rose's first and last matches. Until next time, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.